For today's video, we're in a slightly different filming location. We're about two feet to the left of where I would normally film. I'm actually sitting on the arm of the sofa, which you would think would be less comfortable than the sofa, but I think it's actually comfier. <laughs> and today we're finally organizing my witchcraft books. For anyone who's new to this channel, my name is Hearth and I'm passionate about witchcraft and paganism. And not only do I practice it within my own life, but I also share information about it on social media and on YouTube. And when it comes to books, I really enjoy having quite a large reference collection, both for my own practice and also for sharing with others. And the problem with that is that unless you have it organized, it can become chaotic really, really quickly. And that's exactly what has happened here. So I'm finally doing it. We're gonna be alphabetizing all of my books and I have a feeling it's gonna take me longer than I'm probably expecting. <laughs> history on my book collection because it hasn't always looked like this and it doesn't need to look this way for everyone. When I first started my magical practice I didn't have any physical books and I was largely working on an intuitive basis. It was only when I went to the public library and I realised that there were a few books on the subject that I started to learn from books and I went back to these books time and time again. I went to every public library in the vicinity just to see if they had anything different, and I would take notebooks with me so that I could write down any bit of information that I could. It was only when I had more money that I started going to charity shops, and I found a few secondhand books in there. Most of them were from the mid 90s, they were mostly spell books, and they too were then added into my collection. A few years down the line, I started to go onto eBay and Amazon and get books on specific subjects that interested me, like green witchcraft, hedge witchcraft, and kitchen witchcraft. These two were then added into my collection, and I mostly worked off these few books for many years. In the early 2010s, when I started to really grow my social media and my Tumblr blog, I started adding to my collection even more, because I really wanted to understand more about magical practice outside of what I would intuitively practice. And then in 2018, when I started my YouTube channel, that's when my book collection really started to expand rapidly, because I had a lot of people asking about topics that I personally didn't have a lot of information in, or they wanted book recommendations and I'd maybe only had one book in my collection for the entire time of my practice. And so my book collection really started to develop from there, and that's also where I started to find an interest in older and more unusual witchcraft books, and now my collection is as it is today. A lot of my books are physical, and that's because for me I find physical books easier for me to read, I find it easier to get me in the right headspace. But that doesn't mean that digital books are less valid, or audiobooks for that matter. Your book collection is going to look very different. It might be really small, it might be absolutely huge, it might be digital, or it might be audio only, and that is a completely fine book collection. As long as your book collection works for you, that's the most important thing. I have, however, got to the point where my book collection isn't really working for me because I haven't got it organized in any way. At the minute, I have four bookshelves, most of them looking a bit like the one next to me, and they've just turned to absolute chaos. So I figured it was about time I do a massive overhaul, and I wanted to alphabetize the books. Now that might sound like a really silly idea, and at this point I'm starting to agree, I didn't realize how difficult it would be to get everything alphabetized without taking everything off the bookshelves, and I've just got to the point where I have to accept I'm gonna have to gut the bookshelves and just start from scratch. A few months ago, I did get this entire process started by creating an Excel spreadsheet and alphabetizing all of my books based off title. Now I chose title because I find it easier to remember the title of a book than the author. I did, however, take out any as and thes at the start of a book title, because that way it just makes it so much easier to figure out where everything is. I did include the author's name in the spreadsheet so that I find it easier to know who wrote the book, and I also included whether it was a hardback or a paperback, because the hardback books are going in a different bookshelf for their preservation. Because this bookshelf is quite sunny, and so I don't want any of my really nice books, the ones I really enjoy, to fade, because that would be really sad, and I don't want to deal with that. So in the end, I had a massive spreadsheet. And I mean, massive. This isn't even all of the books in my collection because some of them I simply can't find, but we are now looking at um, quite a big spreadsheet. Um, yeah, this is gonna take me ages. So first thing I'm doing, I need to gut this shelf because I have thought about trying to do this 
while everything is in place and it just doesn't work. So we are gooding the bookshelf and we are gonna hope for the best. <laughs> I'm actually really worried about this because this could take me so long that I give up. And I don't wanna give up. I, I want it to be nice and organized so that I can find things again. That would be amazing. So let's start gooding this bookshelf. So this bookshelf is actually quite tall. It's way, way up here. Most of the time in videos, you can't even see the top of the bookshelf. I think the first thing I need to do is to take off anything fragile. I do have a few crystal items on here that I really don't wanna break. So I'm gonna take all the trinkets off first and then start on the books. They're adorable. I got them from like Home Sense. Look how cute he is. Okay. They're adorable. <laughs> These are the things that I'm scared of breaking because they're just so fragile that I just don't want to damage them. I actually don't remember where I got you from. He's very cute though. I also keep a few of my magical tools on here. So I have one of my wands. You actually can't even really see this that well. This was one of the earliest ones that I ever got when I was still a follower of the Wiccan tradition. So it's a very traditionally Wiccan wand. I also have a few pendulums on here that are in their little storage bags. And I don't know what happened. Somewhere along the way, I just started to use it as storage, <laughs> which is not good. A bit like altars, I really shouldn't use my bookcases to store random things, but it just kind of ended up happening that way. I have a lot of fake greenery. <laughs> I don't know, I can't keep green things alive. So instead I get fake alternatives. Like my entire house is full of fake plants because I kill everything. I also have quite a lot of fake dead things like these and this. These are all from TK Maxx, by the way. Like if you ever want like cool things like this, TK Maxx, it's a good place to go, but I have nowhere to put them. <laughs> so those are all the trinkety things and my bookcase looks really sad with them all gone, but I think I'm just gonna have to start pulling things out and just hoping for the best. Yeah. And some of these for reference are not gonna stay in the bookshelf. So I have a few books that are books that I got years and years and years ago that either I'm not interested in anymore or I never reference them because they aren't particularly good. And so they are going in a trunk. Actually, they're going in the trunk that's right behind me and they're just gonna stay in there because they don't need to be on a bookshelf if I'm never gonna reference them, I'm never gonna read them, I never get them down. Some of them I have kind of sentimental value because they're some of my earlier books, particularly the ones on Wicca, and that I just don't reference anymore because I no longer practice Wicca but I don't wanna lose that sentimentality because I'm one of those like annoyingly sentimental people where I will keep anything if it is even remotely sentimental. So we'll see. I almost have to ask myself what the best way of doing this is because now that I have the top shelf up here clear, I could, in theory, start organizing and alphabetizing books because that way, instead of having a thousand books on the floor, I don't have a thousand books, but I'm just using that as a reference. Um, I would instead already be starting to put them on the shelf so that I'm not sitting with a bunch of books everywhere. So I might start doing that. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Move it up just slightly so you can see what I'm doing. Right, what else do I have? Maybe it's over here. While going through this, I might point out a few books that have been particularly useful to me and might be particularly useful to you. One of them is The Art and Practice of Astral Projection by Ophiel. Now it is really important to remember that a lot of my books do come from secondhand bookshops. I don't get that many books new. And so you might find that a book isn't available in this cover, but it could still be available out there. So this is 
either the 1961 or the 1974 cover. I'm not sure which edition this is, but you might find this book is still available. It's just going to look slightly different. So this is The Art and Practice of Astral Projection by Ophiel. And it's a really interesting read. Astral Projection. Just Astral Projection? Did I... <laughs> Why did I think that that was a suitable title for me to give that? Just Astral Projection. That could be anywhere. Ah! Huh! Never mind. Found it! <laughs> this is another one. Um, I think this one is still in print, it just looks slightly different. This is The Llewellyn Practical Guide to Astral Projection by Denning and Phillips. My copy looks like this, you might find it elsewhere, and this is another interesting one on astral projection. What I didn't think of actually at the time, at first I thought that having everything alphabetical was going to take them out of categories, but if anything I think it might make it easier for them to fit into categories, because all books on astral projection are typically have astral projection in the name, fairly early on in the name, so this could actually have like a double aspect where it could put them in categories and alphabetize them which would be really cool. Now this book is one that is really significant in my magical practice, and that is Before You Cast a Spell by Carl McCollman. This book was actually recommended to me by a high priestess. It was one of the first books that I had recommended to me directly, and I just found it super fascinating. It really drove my practice forwards. It made me focus on my beginner practices and beginner principles and building up that foundation. And it's one of the reasons why I teach witchcraft today, which I think is just so cool. And I had no idea that one book, one fairly small book could be so pivotal. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this today, though I used to, because it does have a strong Wiccan influence and the author does have a tendency to talk down at the magical practitioner. But this one was so pivotal for me and it's the reason why I went on to do what I do. So I think this is just really cool. Besom Stang Sword. This one is a great book for traditional witchcraft if you are in America, because I find a lot of books on traditional witchcraft are based in the British Isles. Usually they're related to a specific location such as Cornwall or Devon or Essex. This one is a form of traditional witchcraft that's based in America and has been created by an American traditional witchcraft coven. So if you are American, this one could be really interesting. I have a full review of it on my Patreon. This one is pretty good if you do want American style traditional witchcraft. Okay, next, The Black Toad. Oh, where are you? Come out, come out, wherever you are. Here, yeah, bookie, bookie, bookie. Bookie, bookie, bookie. Yeah, Bucky, I, I can't find this book. Where, where is this book? I'm not sure where I've put it. I've put that somewhere and I can't find it, so I'm gonna have to skip that one. Ah, <laughs> I found the black toad, here it is. The black toad, got it. Next. The book of grimoires is blue. I'm pretty certain it's blue. That doesn't help me. <laughs> A lot of books are blue. Where is it? Oh, I cannot find it. It might be in this giant stack actually that I moved. Anyway, if I find it later, I'll add it in. The Book of Practical Candle Magic. This is actually an interesting one. I just have to be able to find it. Candle Burning Rituals. That's not quite the right one. I get a lot of people asking for candle magic recommendations. I actually don't have that many. I have Mystic Dylan's book, which I will get to further in this video, but I have these two. This is the only one that I've had for a long amount of time. This is Candle Burning Rituals for Passion, Prosperity, Protection and Power by Marie Bruce. This one I've had for quite a while. And then more recently, about a year ago, I got this one. This is The Book of Practical Candle Magic by Leo Vinci. Vinci, Vicky, Vinky, I'm not sure, but these two books are pretty good. But if you can't get hold of these, because both of these are quite old, I think they're the 80s, 90s, which isn't necessarily accessible for everyone. I'm not sure if they're in print. Mystic Dylan has a book on candle magic and it is a brilliant. I absolutely love it, especially if you are a beginner. I am not affiliated with Mystic Dylan in any way. I just think that he's incredibly cool and the book is really, really good. So if you want a starting book on that, that is a good option. Botanical folk tales. Um, oh no, I've seen it. Oh, that could be anywhere. Okay, we're gonna have to come back to that one. This isn't going well. I've already lost maybe four books. 
They, to be fair, they might be on a different bookshelf, so I'll have to try those. I might have already found a problem, and that is that I think I've missed a book. This one in particular by Oak, Ash and Thorn should be already in there, but I didn't include it, so I might have taken out the buy as well. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I took out the buy. Never mind. I'm an idiot. That should definitely have gone in. Did I put that under of? It shouldn't be under of, it should be under blood. I know it says of blood and bones, but you gotta admit that should be under blood and not of. Cause of is an extra, we don't need extras. The other downside is I've actually purchased books since I made this list. <laughs> so now I have to put these in as well manually and I'm dyslexic, so the alphabet is not my friend. <laughs> A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S. So it goes before Celtic Tree Magic, which isn't in. Where's that? Oh, shit. Okay, well, it goes there. If you are interested in numerology, oops. Tie a stack of books just fell over. If you are interested in numerology, try this one. This is The Complete Book of Numerology by David A. Phillips, PhD. It's quite a good way of learning about it if you are more scientifically minded, perhaps, and you really enjoy less of a magical approach and more of a uh, mundane kind of scientific approach. So that could be really useful if that's the kind of thing you are looking for. That's not on the list. I found another one that's not on the list. This is The Craft of the Wise, A Practical Guide to Paganism and Witchcraft by Vicky Bramshaw. And I don't understand why this isn't there. <laughs> but it's not. Create a servitor. It should be before create a servitor. It should be this one. So there. Do you remember when I said, I can't find that? I can't find that one either. I don't know where that is. Where's that gone? Well, it turns out they were upstairs. Because of course they were. Where else would you put them except on a pile on the floor in your bedroom? Okay, I need to put this down. This is heavy. <sighs> okay. Whew. And this is where a lot of them were, like these ones, like earth magic. Now I know where they were. What am I missing? Because what I don't want is to get like this row down and realize that I don't have any space further up when I find a book that I'm missing. So I feel like I need to plan accordingly and that is very not me. <laughs> Celtic law and druidic ritual, Celtic plant magic. Celtic magic, Celtic plant magic. I'm missing one. Shit. Complete book of astrology. Missing incense, oils, and brews as well. Mmm, that's upstairs. Complete book of numerology. Complete book of witchcraft I'm missing as well. I'm missing the second of that. Shit. Missing Cornish witchcraft. Oh, no. Okay, um, I can't afford to put any more on this top shelf, just in case. So, the element encyclopedia of 5,000 spells. <laughs> that is by far the biggest book I own, and it's heavy. So this is the book. Um, this is the Element Encyclopedia of 5,000 Spells. It's, um, it's big. So this is gonna have to be the first one to go in because it's heavy. <sighs> if that falls over, you'll know about it like on the other street. This is my second biggest book. <laughs> The Encyclopedia of Vampires, which is not something that you would necessarily use within witchcraft, but from a folkloric perspective, I've always found it fascinating learning about the different legends and stories of the undead, not just vampires per se. And this one specializes in loads of history about like undead mythologies around the world. So it's not necessarily witchcraft related, but it is a really interesting read if you can deal with reading a book this big, mind, because it's it's not small. <laughs> and then along the same line is this one, this is the Encyclopedia of Magical Creatures. 
and it covers creatures and spirits from all over the world and loads of different mythologies. It's really interesting and it has like um, accounts as well that have been documented throughout history which is really interesting. It's quite an old book now, I say old as in like it's not a recent publication, it's been out for about 10 years I think. But you can tell how much I've read mine, my spine on this one is just broken because I've read it so much. So this book is actually really important to me, even though I haven't read it in a long time. I've loaned this to so many different people, I've read it so many times, it is battered, look at that. This is all staining on the pages and like water damage. And this is like fully battered, it's all like warped on the ends and yeah, I used to love this book. The last time I loaned it out was after I read it last. So I think I, I think I last loaned this out in like 2012, 2013. So you're looking at me not having read it in 10 years. And I feel like I need to give this one more love. This is one of those sentimental books where although I haven't picked it up recently, I don't really want to get rid of it. So it's going on the bookshelf and maybe some time on a bookshelf will straighten out the ends. I'm already having problems. <laughs> I'm gonna have to rejig, I think, how I'm doing it. Because I'm finding like little books that I'm missing. So I'm already gonna have to move stuff onto this other shelf. falling, books are falling. Okay. Fairy comes after exploring candle magic. I don't have exploring candle magic. <laughs> Where is it? Everyday Witch A to Z spell book. Oh no, I don't have the space. Another really pivotal book for me was Hearth Witch by Anna Franklin. Now, as far as I'm aware, Anna Franklin is the first person to coin the term Hearth Witch and she refers to herself as a practitioner of hearth witchcraft throughout her book. Before this point, people were using many different terms, but the term hearth witch was really focused on in this book in particular. And this book was really one of the most eye-opening ones for me in my practice when I was a more advanced practitioner. It really made me aware of my own place within my practice and the kind of titles that I felt comfortable with. Before that point, I wasn't referring to myself as a hearth witch, obviously, because I didn't know it was a term I could use. Instead, I was bouncing between elemental witchcraft and sea witchcraft, storm witchcraft. And this was the real moment where I was like, hang on a minute, it makes total sense that I am a hearth witch. And that's really why I started referring to myself by this title, because it just made total sense within my practice. And this was the first book that really drove me towards that. This isn't actually the original copy that I had. It was actually my partner at the time's copy that I read. And then I got myself a copy as well. And I'm just so happy that I did because this was just so pivotal for me in my practice. So it's a real sentimental book that's going in the bookshelf. Right there. Although I will probably have to move it because I can't find like half of the books on this list. <laughs> This was another one, I'm finding all of them. This is Green Witchcraft by Anne Mora. And this was another one of the first books that I actually got when I started buying books. I can't remember if this was already a secondhand copy when I bought it or if I bought it new and I really did just batter it. But this was a beloved book from me. I actually think I got this online, maybe from eBay, I think. And really interesting, it has quite a strong um, Wiccan influence, so it isn't necessarily going to be for everyone, but this one was really interesting at the time, and so I actually did get a newer version, so they're still making them. This is Green Witchcraft 5, no, Green Witchcraft 4 by Anne Mora, and it's the same series, so I'm gonna read this one and see if this one is better than the original, but yeah, that's another really sentimental one. I wouldn't necessarily purchase it now, knowing what I know about the book, but at the time, it was so pivotal in my practice. Should I have cleaned off my shelves before I started? Yes. Did I? No. So now we're just dealing with it. Oh, that was definitely meant to go in somewhere. Oh, I definitely missed that out. Oh no, okay. Oh no. History of magic. Oh, it's gonna be over there. Oh, I've trapped myself in now. You can't see this. But there's only like a little gap that I can get through and you are currently in the little gap, so... 
I'm gonna have to get those later, I think. I think I need to clear this, alphabetize this stuff as best as I can, and then go and get the rest of them. I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. Oh. I'm free. Where's that one meant to be? The full fairy. Oh. Wait, seriously? It's gotta be before that. Oh no, okay. It's been about a week since I last filmed any of this video, and you might have noticed there's a few additional knickknacks in the bookcase now. I did end up putting in a few of my little ghosties and other bits and pieces when I was doing my live stream, because when I looked in the camera I realised how empty the bookcase appeared. Now I know that by the time this video comes out you will already have seen the finished bookcase, I will have already done it, I would love to know your opinions. Do you prefer the bookcase for just books, or do you like it when I have like my skulls and other knickknacks on there? I think I prefer it with knickknacks, but there isn't really enough space in front of anything for me to safely put things and not risk them falling off. So I might have to rejig my entire bookcase. <laughs> Do you remember at the start of this video when I said that this might take me longer than I thought? Yeah, I'm realizing it's gonna take me a lot longer than I thought. And at some point I have to film other videos. So I'm really gonna have to pull my finger out we are starting this early today. I'm hoping that I will be able to make it outside before it goes dark, but honestly, that might not be possible. So um, yeah, I'm gonna give that a go. The other issue is that I've actually purchased more books since I started this. So I'm gonna have to add additional books into the bookcase because that's great fun for me. The problem with alphabetizing is you actually have to maintain it. Okay, so I think I'm gonna start by taking the knickknacks off again, just so that I can have an idea of what I'm looking at and also what I'm gonna do with them. So I'm gonna have to abandon these on a table, I think, for now, and then go from there. I actually still don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm not, I'm not convinced that I wanna take them all down but equally, I also don't want to have to rejig the entire bookshelf again. I, I don't know. <laughs> Looking at the bookshelf now, it does look really, really empty. And I do have some greenery that I haven't added yet. So I do have all of this, which I think is going to make it look a lot more alive. But is it going to be enough? To be fair, I now just have a shelving unit just full of my knickknacks. So I think maybe... I need to try and put a few of them up alongside some greenery and maybe actually make breaks between the letters. So just the ones that you would typically see on camera. So we're looking at kind of this shelf and maybe the shelf below it and the shelf below that are really the three that you see on camera. Everything up here is largely lost when I'm filming. So I don't necessarily think I need as many knickknacks up here or maybe I should just put the small ones that kind of get lost up here and then make breaks. So perhaps, mm, where's the best break? Maybe like after H, which is here, I think could be a useful break to put something. And then maybe something after P or after S even. Oh no, after S is all the way over here. I don't know. I should have really come into this video with some kind of idea as to what I was doing, but no, I have none. I also took some books out of my bookshelf and then bought some new books since the live stream and also since I filmed the last video of this. So I have extra books that I need to put into my bookshelf. So I think I'm gonna have to do that first. The advantage I've got, however, is that a lot of these books, these three are on astral projection because I took them out specifically for the live stream. And then Welsh Witchcraft, I actually took out for the last, like the one before last live stream. So most of these are all in one place, which makes it easy for me. I ended up going into a witchcraft shop really unexpectedly and I saw a few books. I actually bought three of them, but one of them I'm already reading, so I'm not going to put that in the bookcase just yet. But the two that I got separately were The Witch's Apothecary. This is by Lorraine Anderson and it's How to Make Magical Potions for the Wheel of the Year. So I got that one and it's a hardback, 
but I think it's going to go in this bookshelf instead of my other one because it's not a black letter press or a Troy hardback. If you know what they look like, you will understand the distinction between them, but those hardbacks are usually fabric bound and they're a little bit more delicate than say this style of hardback. So I think this style is going to go in this bookshelf. I also got Poison Prescriptions, Plant Power, Medicine, Magic and Ritual by the Seed Sisters. And this is what this one looks like. Both of these looked super interesting to me. If you would like full videos, of, if you would like full videos on these, do let me know and I can try to include them somewhere. I'll also probably do a review on my Patreon as well. So I've got to figure out where these go. And because I haven't put these in the big sheet that I've got, I'm going to have to manually figure out where these go. Uh, uh, that's going to be fun. So the bonus is, is that this one's going to be in W and this is going to be in P and I just have to hope that there's enough space for them and then I'm going to rejig it all anyway so I'm not really sure why I'm that concerned. Anyway, I'm going to start with W because then I can do Welsh witchcraft at the same time. So Welsh comes before witch because E comes before I. So I might be dyslexic but I know that much. Where was I? I'm down here. And some of you who don't know what it's like to be dyslexic are probably thinking it's the alphabet, it's not that hard. But when you're dyslexic Letters no longer hold substantial meaning, their shape changes directions, and every time I have to go through the alphabet, I have to manually run through every single letter. I don't know what comes before S, I have to go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and uh, it takes ages. So by the end of this, I might be able to just bounce around the alphabet absolutely fine, but at the minute, I'm still working on it. I'm trying. All right, poison. Oh, and I also feel the need to reiterate, this book about poison prescriptions isn't actually about, you know, doing bad things to people with plants. Not really, anyway. It's actually about, let me just read the little bit on the back so you've got a better understanding. Poison Prescriptions is a stunningly illustrated grimoire of some of the most notorious plants, henbane, datura, belladonna, among others. It is also a practical guide to plant magic, medicine, and ritual, offering advice to professional and home herbalists to those interested in forgotten lore and the old ways, and to all those who wish to reclaim control of their own well-being. This book urges the resurrection of the ancient tradition of using these witching herbs in ritual and medicine. Now is the time to relink magic and medicine in the context of modern herbalism and contemporary witchcraft. And so it's a really interesting read for me. I'm not necessarily going to implement anything into my life as of right now, but I do think this kind of book is really interesting to learn about, so I decided to give it a go. Right, P, 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 where are the P's? Planetary magic, okay. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, okay. I have to decide what is and isn't going back up again. Some of the things that light up, I might not put back up. So I have this skull, which is actually kind of an antique from my parents' house. I think it's probably about 30 years old at this point, and it technically doesn't light up by itself, but it, I've put some lights in it, so I'll see if I can turn it on. Where is the switch? The switch is in here somewhere. Okay, so the switch is here. So when you turn it on, I've put like some green lights in it, and I actually did that for Samhain a few years ago, but my fear is battery acid, and books. Mm. If you've ever accidentally left batteries when they've gone dead inside an electrical appliance, you will know that they have a tendency to start leaking over time. And so I'm kind of nervous of that. I also ended up putting him on this thing, which is just like a silver platter that I got from TK Maxx and he sat on top of it. But this is not as stable as you would think it would be. It is so unbalanced that I actually don't think I'm gonna put this back up again. I think instead I'm gonna save him for Samhain and not risk breaking him because honestly, it would be so heartbreaking to me if I broke this. He's just like so precious to me, this creepy little Halloween pumpkin. So I think this one is gonna stay off the bookshelf. I also have this little pumpkin that I got from Poundland a few years ago. And I don't think he really fits in with anything else I've got going on in here. Although he looks green here, he actually does change colors. Like you can see kind of like the blue and the pink there. 
and I just, I'm just not sure it fits the vibe that I've got going on, so I think this one's gonna stay off the bookcase as well. And also, really fragile, kind of scared of breaking. There are, however, a few things that I would like to include, such as my skulls. So I have this kind of copper effect skull, I also have my crow skull that I absolutely love, and I have a fox skull, which I just adore. I got all of these from TK Maxx a few years ago, and I think it's called TJ Maxx in America, but we have like TK Maxx and we have HomeSense, and I think they're both owned by TJ Maxx. But these are all things that really resonate more with my practice anyway. The skulls, the animal remains, these kind of things. Now everything I've got here is just made of metal. It's not a real skull. This is not a real skull. But I just like that representation and I like how shiny everything is. But the question still remains, how do I get them in that? Good question. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> Oh, it's almost a shame to ruin what the bookshelf looks like. Ah, okay. I think I'm gonna start with my fox skull because it's my favorite piece. I really like it being super visible. And then I'm gonna do the two other skulls further down. Thinking of going before I. So I starts here at identifying the quartered circle. Wait. Oh, wait. Oh, it, oh. I've put how to make magic mirrors under H instead of M. I'm not sure if that's a good idea, but okay, I'm just gonna have to leave it. So it's going basically before identifying the quartered circle. So that means I've got to move loads of books out of the way. How many books are we talking? We're talking about five. So I'm thinking of just grabbing these five books. And then I can slide my fox in. Oh, yay! It looks a little bit more like me now. You can't even really tell, but I promise it looks a little bit more like me now. While I've got them out, there's actually a really interesting book, especially for beginners, and that is Paul Husson's Mastering Witchcraft. This is the original cover, this is the new cover. If you were to buy it today, you're more likely going to find this cover than this cover. Now, the book itself is really good for beginner witchcraft, getting started in the practice, and I've recommended it before in my beginner witchcraft video, and I will still recommend it because it's still a really good book. The information on this one goes as follows. An enduring classic since its publication in 1970, Mastering Witchcraft is one of the best how-to manuals for those wishing to practice traditional European witchcraft as a craft rather than a new age religion. Starting from first principles, Husson instructs the novice step-by-step -step in the arts of circle casting, blessing, and banning. The uses of amulets and talismans, filters, divination, necromancy, wax and images, knots, fascination, conjuration, magical familiars, spells to arouse passion or lust, attain vengeance, and of course, counter spells to exercise and annul the magic of others. And it's just so good. It's really, really good. If you want a really beginner book for something like traditional witchcraft, where you're wanting to make that step into traditional witchcraft rather than new age spirituality or rather than Wicca, then this could be a really good option. I really enjoyed it. A few forewarnings on it is that it can be a little bit ceremonial. If you are not interested in a twofold path, then this probably isn't the book for you. And also it can be a little bit jarring for those who are coming from an Abrahamic tradition. And so just bear that in mind. When I say that, what I mean is that a few of the rituals in here are designed to essentially clear your mind for the way forward if you don't want to continue with your Abrahamic faith. Now, I think it is important to note that a lot of people do practice witchcraft while also following Christianity, for example, and that is a perfectly valid and acceptable practice, but not everyone is gonna feel comfortable doing that. And so some people do want to take a step back from the religion that maybe they were raised within and forge their own path. And so there are techniques in here, such as reciting the Lord's Prayer backwards, which are designed to essentially allow you to clear your mind and clear your conscience and break free from religion that maybe you don't want to be attached to. 
You can skip over that, of course, if your religion is something that you want to be attached to. And you can still have a really successful magical practice, but just bear in mind that you might find it a little bit jarring if you're used to very religious surroundings. And this book kind of goes, mm, no, we, we can get you away from that if that's what you want. So yeah, just bear that in mind, but really good book. This school's a big one, so we're gonna have to try and fit this in as best as we can. No, still not enough. I need to take more. Okay, <laughs> after all of that, I realized that the skull doesn't even look right when it's like in the shelf. So it's going on the shelf. So I didn't have to rejig any of that. So I've got a big stack of books here and some more on the floor that now needs to go somewhere else. So I think I'm gonna start putting the greenery on and then I can move on to another bookshelf, hopefully. Oh, I can stand up again. Blummin' hell. I can't feel my legs. <laughs> so I have a lot of things that I'm not really sure where they're gonna go, but for now, we can add on the fake greenery. I don't know what it is about green, but there's something about it that I just love. This is kind of battered. Like, can you see this? It is so close to breaking. So I have to be kind of careful and these get tangled up. So yeah, we're just gonna have to hope that this is fine. Um, oh, there's a broken piece, fun, okay. I think I need to get some new ones of these, I think. I mean, I don't hate that. Just having a vine just hanging there. Oh, okay, so we got green. I'm not sure if it just looks a little bit messy and overgrown, but then I also kind of like that. So we're gonna have to see. I am gonna then move all of these books onto my other bookshelf and I'm gonna have to start working over there but I have a few extra things I just need to add in here. So I have this beautiful piece of art that I'm gonna have to find out the name of the lovely person who sent it to me. It is absolutely beautiful and it always goes down here in my videos. You can't actually see where that went, but you will see it when I film videos. And then I also have a few of my wands that I'm not really sure where to put. Um, they might just kind of go on there and then here. Um, because I don't really have anywhere else to specifically put them and I actually just got a new wand that's really calling to me and so they're going up there for now because in case you were worried, magical tools, a bit like magical practice, kind of ebbs and flows in our lives and sometimes we'll have a magical tool that we absolutely love and we use for every single ritual and then all of a sudden you just won't feel connected to it anymore and that isn't a failing of you, it's that at this given time that wand and maybe the wood that that wand is made of or that specific crystal or item is no longer going to benefit or develop your practice further and it's time to set it to one side and maybe try out something slightly different. Everything, however, is cyclical and more likely than not, you will find that these things come back to you again and they will cycle around and you will end up using them again. So I keep all of my old magical tools because I know that at some point in the future, I will end up using them again. So this is the bookshelf all complete and there are some things I love about it and there are some things that I'm not such a fan of. So for the positives first, I think alphabetization was the best thing I could have done and as long as I can maintain it, I think it's definitely going to help me in the future when it comes to finding the books that I'm after. I also really like the fact that I did add in a few of my skull knickknacks as it just makes the bookshelf feel a little bit less clinical and a little bit more personal. The thing I'm not really sure I'm a fan of, however, is actually the greenery, which I'm surprised by because usually I love greenery on my bookshelves, but I'm starting to think that it's making it just less practical. And after all, the whole point of doing this was to make my bookshelf more useful. And when you have certain books that are holding down the leaves of the fake plant, so I can't move them, it does make the bookshelf as a whole just a lot less useful. So we're gonna see what happens with that. I might come back and just take all the greenery off and just go with a more 
more clean look. We'll just have to see how well I can maintain the leaves. At the end of the day though, the leaves are looking a little bit battered. I have had them for many years, so I might end up dismantling them and perhaps turning it into a greenery foliage crown that I can wear to events and shows. I think that could be a good way of repurposing what is essentially a plastic object, and I do want to get the most out of it that I can, so I might end up doing that with it instead. I did end up doing the other bookshelves off camera, and this was because a lot of them are in awkward places, maybe not very well lit, so I ended up doing those separately, but I will add some extra footage in for them now. Just a reminder, I do think I mentioned it earlier, but in case I didn't, if you do see any books on my bookshelves and you would like to know more information about them, maybe you want to know what I think of them, feel free to let me know in the comment section and I will try to give you the author, the name of the book, and also my opinion on it if I've already read it, so that maybe you can expand on your own magical collection. So I hope that this did inspire you within your own magical practice. Maybe it's time for you to have a little bit of a sort out and an organise of all of your witchcraft books. I have a question for all of you though that I would love to know the answer of. Which is your favourite magical book that you have in your collection? It doesn't necessarily have to be the oldest or the most expensive, it's just a book that you think is the most important, pivotal and special to you. Maybe it's the first witchcraft book that you ever bought, maybe it's the one that you used to the most success. I would love to know, you might have noticed, I love witchcraft books, so I'm always up for having a few more in my collection, so do let me know in the comment section. If you like videos like this, please let me know by liking it and then I can do more like this. I do also have a playlist of book videos that I will link on the end screen so that you can see more book videos from me. If you want specific reviews on books and would like to support me even further, I do post extra videos every single month on my Patreon and a lot of those are individual book reviews. So if you would like a full in-depth book review, and perhaps I'm a little bit more free to put my full opinion into some of these book reviews, they will be on my Patreon. And if you do enjoy my channel as a whole, I post new videos every single week, so feel free to subscribe. With that being said, I hope you're staying safe, I hope you have a marvellous magical day, and I will see you in the next video with my new bookshelf, because I've not filmed anything yet. So I hope you're all staying safe, and I will see you soon. Bye! Mm -hmm.